When I think of reverence, um, I can't help but think of Jesus. Um, it's unbelievable to me how reverent Jesus was. Um, when you read the Gospels, it's, it's, it's so amazing how many times in Scripture Jesus allows himself to be interrupted um, by children, even blind man Barnabas, he doesn't just presume that he knows what Barnabas needs. Blind man Barnabas, who was blind since he was born, he doesn't presume to know. He asks Barnabas, what can I do for you? And waits for the response. Because Jesus, I remember asking the Lord one time, why is that, Lord? Why would you ask somebody blind from birth what you could do for them? It seems so obvious. And I remember the Holy Spirit just saying, because I don't want to just fix humanity. I actually want to know humanity. Um, Jesus allows for interruption reverencing moments, and oftentimes these interruptions become these incredibly divine invitations to something. And Jesus not only reverences creation and people and the world around him, Jesus shows us this ultimate act of reverence for God by reverencing the Father. And it starts with this reality that the Father's alive that worship is a dialogue requiring reverence, that spontaneity is a reality of our worship because spontaneity is the reality of every living relationship. And if our God's alive, then we've got to be awake for that living encounter. And there, Jesus says, hey, you want to be a worshiper? This is how I do it. I my, my father, this father I'm introducing you to is so alive, so active that I actually don't do anything I don't see my father do and I don't say anything I don't hear my father say. That's reverence. And I remember one time... Um, reading the passage where Jesus is on the boat and the wind and waves are crashing over the boat and the disciples are so afraid. And they wake up Jesus. Jesus, we're going to die if you don't wake up. Why are, how could you be sleeping in a time like this? Because Jesus, you know, the disciples are awake, but Jesus is asleep. Wind and waves crashing over the boat. Jesus is asleep. Disciples are awake. And I remember reading that and thinking, I've seen this before. Where have I seen this in the Bible before? I've seen this before. And, um, and then I, I realized what it was. I, it's Gethsemane. Um, it's just an inversion of the same story. In Gethsemane, Jesus is awake for something going on. Something eternal is happening. Jesus can't sleep. But the disciples, they can't stay up for it. They're falling asleep. Jesus is awake. The wind and the waves and the boat experience. Jesus is asleep. The disciples are awake. And one of the most amazing things is to realize what we want to become as a people, as a reverent people, is I want, to, I want to learn how to sleep when Jesus is asleep. Stay awake to what Jesus is awake to. Stay asleep to what Jesus is asleep to. I want to become reverent. 
I want to reverence the living activity of the presence of Jesus that's here right now. We want to stay awake to what you're awake to, Jesus. We want to sleep to what you're asleep to. We want to become a reverent people to your presence. And most of all, we don't want to make you the observer. We want to realize that we're in the midst of an interactive, dialogical relationship here. You're not the only one listening, and we're not the only ones singing or speaking. You're the active one. You're speaking. We are observing what it is that you're doing. That's what we want to become. That's how we want our eyes to be trained. So we ask for that in, in your name, Jesus. By your way, Jesus, the way you were with your father, we want to become that kind of people, reverencing not only creation and the world around us in all that you're doing in that, but also reverencing your presence in such a way that we realize our God is resurrected, our God is alive, and by the Spirit, by your Spirit, Lord, your presence, the presence of the Father and the Son are dwelling with us, and we want to dialogue with that. We want to reverence that. Lord, do that in us. Amen.